Good morning, people. Watch from a 65, Lisa Boyce. I'm going to give you the gospel. The gospel's in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. That Christ spilled his blood for our past, present, and future sins, was buried, and rose again on the third day, according to Scripture. That's how we're saved. That's the gospel right there. The gospel. Um, it is grace through faith in Christ alone. Not of ourselves, not of works, least any man should boast. Uh, people uh, ask me about um, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Well, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, even though they're in, this is how I learned dispensations from um, Robert Breaker. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, even though they're in the New Testament, they're still part of the Old Testament law. They're giving an account of what happened with Christ when he was crucified. John is the only, the closest um to the gospel that he talks about Christ's death, burial, and resurrection. Um, that God gave his only begotten son that whosoever, keyword, believe. And that's, I think John is the only one that says whosoever believe. Whosoever means me, you, anyone. Whosoever believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. That is true. That is the gospel. Um, it is by believing. We don't come to him by saying, Lord, look at what I've done. Look at what uh, I walked away from. Look at it. Because at that point, it's no longer Christ who's, who, you, who your sinner is on. It's you. And you haven't done nothing for salvation. Matter of fact, we're not worthy. We didn't earn salvation. Salvation is something that Christ provided for us at the cross by spilling his blood. And we believe in what he's done for our sins. We come to him strictly believing in what he's already done. Um, once you accept Christ as Savior, the Holy Spirit indwells in you. And the Holy Spirit guides you and leads you. The Holy Spirit um, changes you. It is grace through faith in Christ alone, not of ourselves, not of works, least any man should boast. And we are justified. The only way we're justified. There's only one way we're justified, and that is by the blood of Jesus. Period. The blood cleanses us. And when we accept Christ as Savior, the, the blood has cleansed us from all unrighteousness and filthiness of the flesh. That's how we're clean. That's how we're saved. That's how we're kept saved. No other way. That's the simple gospel right there. Someone asked me about water baptism. Water baptism is not required for salvation. Period. It's, it's just not required for salvation. The only requirement for salvation is believing. Matter of fact, the ultimate blasphemy of the Holy Spirit is non-belief. Non-belief. That's what the majority, that's what people are in hell for. Period. I mean, there's no other way of saying it. They're in hell because of non-belief. It's not believing in Christ. I have two sisters. I don't know whether I told, uh, I think I told a few of you this a few months ago. I have two sisters who were devout Jehovah's Witness. And they wanted nothing to do with Christ. They wanted nothing to do with the church. They wanted nothing to do with any of that. Matter of fact, they, their exact words to my mom was that they, they divorced the church. That was their exact words. They're, they were devout Jehovah's Witnesses. And this is for people who are coming on here that's new. Both of them died about a year and a half apart from each other. Both of them died with their mouth wide open. My mom couldn't believe it. Their mouth when they died was wide open. The one sister's mouth was wide open and the other sister's mouth, she died the same way.
Her mouth was wide open. They didn't want nothing to do with the Lord. But they got a rude awakening, unfortunately. And that's what's going to happen with a lot of people. People don't go to hell because of uh, smoking, because of um, whatever. In occasion, uh, sins such as smoking or whatever that you're you know, that you uh, feel that you are going to lose salvation over. Smoking is not something you're going to lose your salvation over. Smoking is something that might get you to heaven quicker, but it's not that. People are in hell because they don't believe. That's the reason why. It's simple as that. People are in hell because they don't believe in Christ, and they don't believe Christ, what he did at the cross for them and their sins. This is when... When you accept Christ as Savior, the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit is your counselor. And the Holy Spirit changes you. The Holy Spirit leads you into all righteousness. That's what the Holy Spirit does. It doesn't get any simpler than that. The Bible talks about the simplicity that is in Christ Jesus, and it doesn't get any simpler than that. Um, you will never lose your salvation once you accept Christ. I emphasize this a lot, and I take, I take a few minutes to do this gospel because it's important. Because what we're seeing now is a shift in the spirit, in the atmosphere. The atmosphere is shifting. Um, things are happening. More than ever, things are happening right now. Netanyahu, this article came off of uh, Israel 365. Netanyahu refers to the new Bennett-led government as Sodom. And people voted for him. It says, on Sunday evening, Israeli's longest-serving Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu bid farewell. In characteristics, in characteristics fashion, he went down fighting. As a parting shot, he cited a verse in Psalm with a hidden meaning highlighting the partisan uh, of uh, Nefali Bennett, comparing the new government to the biblical hotbed of evil Sodom. It says, I can't stand, he said, this is Netanyahu talking. I stand here on the merit of millions of citizens who chose the path of standing proud and not the path of submission. Netanyahu said in this opening of his speech, I stand here as a public emissary chosen by more than one million Israelis who voted for Lukit under my leadership and another million who voted for right-wing parties, knowing that they would be part of a government headed by me. Netanyahu went on to list the accomplishments of the government under his leadership, which after a total of almost 15 years was quite extensive. After warning of the dangers of the Biden administration, the Sleepy Joe administration returning to the Joint Comprehensive Plan of Action, JCPOA, known as the Iran Deal, Netanyahu further warned that the formation of the recent coalition uh, boded ill for such existential threats to Israel. I heard what Naftali Bennett said on this matter, and I am now infinitely more worried, Netanyahu said. Bennett always does the opposite. What does that sound like? Oh, I know. It rhymes with Sleepy Joe. The opposite of what he says and of what he promises. Yeah, that sounds like right now. Of course. He'll fight Iran like he won't sit with uh, Lapid, uh, Lapid and Mansour Abbas and Labor. Netanyahu spent much of his farewell address slamming the new prime minister. 
Bennett ran on a right wing uh, platform, but in order to form a coalition, he joined with uh, Yaisha Tid, a left wing party led by Lapid, and the joint Arab list headed by Mansour Abbas. This was seen as political opportunism, opportunism that betrayed the white ring, uh, the right wing voters who put Bennett in office. Netanyahu criticized the new prime minister by comparing the new coalition to the city of Sodom. It says if Bennett voters had known what he had agreed with Lapid before the election, he would not have passed the minimum requirement votes. Bennett mis misled tens of thousands of right-wing voters and shifted their votes from right to left. The public will not forget this huge scam and will come to terms with it, his supporters at the ballot box. The media, of course, will caress him and everyone around him because they know the simple truth. Bennett and his friends are fake. Right, uh, right, right, and the public know it too. This, uh, this is pretty bad. But the people voted for him. Folks, we know that That government in Israel that was voted in on out of all days, the 13th on a Sunday. And as far as we know right now, like I said last night, all the news has gone downhill. Even It was going downhill before, but it's even worse now. Now this one... came out again and this one I mentioned something about it yesterday and this one happened yesterday and I got news about it. US scrambles US scrambles F twenty two jets and carrier strike group to face off with Russian war games. Oh my God. I just got this. Um sorry. I just got this. U.S. scrambles F-22 jets and carrier strike group to face off with Russian war games near Hawaii ahead of Putin's summit. Now this just came in. Um, but I was going to go to the Israeli Gaza thing that's happening there too right now. But this just happened. The U.S. scrambled F-22 fighter jets and carrier strike group to face off with Russian war games near Hawaii ahead of showdown meeting with Putin and Sleepy Joe. It was revealed yesterday. The two leaders are set to meet in Geneva on Wednesday, today, for crunch talks for the first time since Sleepy Joe was sworn in as president. Sleepy Joe was sworn in in January. Sorry about the president part. In response to the Russian Navy conducting what officials call its largest, largest exercise in the Pacific Ocean since the end of the Cold War, U.S. defense officials said that on Sunday, um, USAF, I guess the United States Air Force F-22s were dispatched to meet Russian bombers near Hawaii. Russia's exercise, which took place about three to five hundred miles west of Hawaiian shores, includes surface ships, anti-submarine aircraft, long-range bombers. The U.S. sent the fighter jets to respond to the bomber flights, but the bombers didn't enter the air defense identification zone and were not intercepted. U.S. officials also said the U.S. carrier strike group headed by the USS Vinson was operating about 200 miles east of Hawaii. The exercise was planned but moved close to Hawaii in response to Russians' military activity. It emerged Wednesday, today. 
U.S. Indo-Pacific Command is monitoring the Russian vessels operating in international waters in the Western Pacific. U.S. Indo-Pacific Command spokesman uh, Captain Mike Kafka told CBS News. Can I say that something is going on right now? Now, with the uh, other one... Now, this just happened last night. With This is the one I wanted to go to, and that one all of a sudden popped up. That one about Russia popped up. This is the uh, Israeli military launched retaliatory airstrikes in Gaza. This was yesterday. So I don't know what's happening over there right now. But according to the breaking report from the Mideast, Israeli re uh, military has reportedly struck targets in Gaza overnight in what the Israeli Defense Forces stated was in response to incendiary balloons. Remember, I talked about that a few days ago, that were launched from Gaza earlier in the day. Those balloons contained some kind of a weapon. According to the reports, the Israeli uh, media incendiary, incendiary balloons launched from Gaza sparked multiple fires in southern Israel. The official Palestinian news agency also reported the airstrikes in Khan Yanis and said ma material damage occurred. So that's what's going on right now. You got Russia that looks like it's on uh, <laughs> looks like it's on U.S. waters, and you got Israel and Gaza striking up again. Ever since, and I'm going to say this again, ever since that swearing in of Natalie Bennett on Sunday, the 13th. The nations are raging right now. U.S. scrambles F-22 jets and carrier strike group. Really? This is not an exercise. They don't do exercises unless they're planning on something. My advice to you all, to get saved. You can share whatever video you want of mine. Because right now is crunch time. I ask you to pray for uh, Cody today. He Today is his day. He takes his driver's test today. And um, he's a little bit nervous. And I ask you to pray for my younger son. That he finds work. He's looking. We put in uh, several applications for him. So that he finds something for the summer. He wants to work. He has a heart to do it. And that's good. That's more than what I can tell you about a lot of other teenagers. Um, but folks, it's time to get saved. For real. Um, this is really getting down to the wire. I'm going to keep, um, keep watch on this U.S. scrambler. Um, I got some articles in my blog that you're going to want to look at. Yeah. I thank you for your support. Um, I have to um, get ready here to take him shortly. So I will be back with the next video. In the meantime, have a nice morning. Thank you.